Yes, you see Chris in the bottom of the <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> with her cowgirl boots on. Welcome back to Valley View Live. The biggest names in professional bull riding are in Las Vegas right here, right now for the 2015 PBR World Finals. We've been chatting about you boys and ladies all week, and the number one ranked rider joins us now to talk about the competition. J.B. Monty is currently on top of the leaderboard, and Chris Daniels from 102.7 The Coyote is back for some cowboy action. Of Thank course you, you are. Yes. You can't stay away from the I'm cowboys. I'm all about uh, cowboys and cowgirls. Right. I mean, how lucky, like you were saying, we're sitting next to the number one. How lucky for us. I know, <laughs> rider. And I always think, what goes through your mind? Yeah. Once the shoot opens, or right before it opens, what are you thinking? Before the toughest eight seconds. In yeah, sports, exactly. Right? Uh, I, I try to keep it pretty simple. I just tell myself <laughs> to never give up. Really? That's You're not like, like I want a hamburger when I'm done here. Or anything? Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I do try to stay pretty calm, and but you know, just don't ever quit until your head hits the ground. Pretty right. much. Oh, I love that. Look oh, at you. You're just Look out it. of the. We call yeah. it the shoot. Is that yes. what you call? Okay. So I've been down there before. I had a chance. I explained this on Tuesday. I had a chance. About a year and a half ago, to sit on a chicken on a chicken, on a chain. chicken on a chain. Okay, tell me a little bit about chicken on a chain and how he compares to Wicked Stick, who you've had a chance to ride on, right? Yes, I rode Wicked Stick last night. Actually, uh, chicken on a chain. He was a really good bull before they retired him, and uh, when they first brought him around, he now you can pet on him, you can sit on He's him, real scratch sweet. on wow. him, real nice. Really? When it's they changed. first brought him around, he was not very friendly at all. And Wicked, what is, it's Wicked Stick. Yeah. How did he get the name, and how wickedly awesome is he, or dangerous? I don't pay attention to them bulls a whole lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know how he got the name, but I'd seen him once before. I got on him last night. I knew he was a really good bull, and uh, luckily it worked out. And, so you guys night. don't like train on the bull with the cowboy. So it is you guys meet for the first time and you ride up. Yeah, that's pretty you, much it. You never wow. go like visit the bull before and have a little like chat. Stare down. To check them <laughs> out and don't say hey. <laughs> I don't. I don't really ask what they do. Uh, I'll go back there, figure out which one. They'll, most of them have ear tags with their yeah. names in them and things, and I'll figure out which one I got to put my rope on, and that's about all wow. I do. How long have you been riding bulls? How long? I started rodeo on when I was three years old, riding sheep, wow. and then this is actually my tenth world finals. And what does a bull weigh? Like what is like one of Right. Well, chicken when chicken on a chain when they retired him, I think he weighed right at 2,000, 2,100. Oh my gosh! And but an average bull will weigh 15, 1,600 pounds. That's just a tank. That is incredible. Yeah, exactly. You talked about your adrenaline. I see Chris getting excited over there because it's true. When people go and they watch, by the way, this is happening right now through Sunday at Thomas and Mac. You can go check out the PBR World Finals. What is the most exciting part in terms of adrenaline for people to get amped up? For me, you know, it's when you step off and. Uh, all the fans are standing up, hooping and hollering. All the, the other bull riders are back there. They're cheering you on, too. And, yeah. uh, you know, when, when you can, you ride and you do good, I mean, you feel 10-foot tall and bulletproof. Mm, yeah. Ten foot tall and bulletproof. That's a country song there. <laughs> oh, was that a reference? Over my head. <laughs> Chris, thank you. So are you sponsored by Wrangler? Can you talk yes. to us about how that works? And how, how proud do you feel when you're, when you're on a bull and you're being sponsored by a really well-known brand? Oh, Wrangler. Uh, you know, I've wore Wranglers ever since I was a little bitty. And uh, that's all it's I had. It's a commercial right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ever since I was a little bitty. And, you know, they, they're they're kind of old school, you know, it's cowboy. Yeah. It's cowboy way, uh, long live cowboys. And, yeah. uh, you know, I like it, it fits my style. And How did that I, connection come about? Like, when did they contact you or did you vibe for them? Kind of a little of both, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I was pushing my agents in that direction. Okay. And uh, <laughs> they, they, we finally got the deal worked out and I couldn't ask for a better sponsor with Wrangler. Uh, you know, I've, I've got all kinds of jeans now, and I put them through the test, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh -huh. There's a lot of events around PBR World Finals. Talk about Fan Jam. Well, Fan Jam last night okay. was fantastic. Okay, amazing. Yes, and um, just, you know, I mean, there's so much stuff going on, but especially right now with the PBR All Family. You can take your kiddos out there. Like you said, you were a little itty-bitty when you started right. at three. So a lot of the kids, they love to see it. And of course, uh, by the way, this is Wrangler too. <gasps> is it? Yes, I, I keep telling you. I complimented it right when you walked in. I'm like, oh, I, I love I'm this. I'm telling you, they've got some pretty cool stuff. I'm going to start shopping right Wrangler. Yes, you need to. Especially <laughs> when I know that you guys are coming to town in yes. the boots. Amazing. Thank you. Guys you. Look awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Half, hats off to you guys for coming in today. Saddle up for the 2015 PBR World Finals going on today through Sunday over at the Thomas and Mac. For tickets, head to the website right there on your screen. Thank you so much. I'm here with our guest host, David Perico, and the rest of his Pop Strings Orchestra. Thank you so much for hosting today. We're so appreciative of that. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm going to give you a pop yeah. quiz.
quiz. Can you name every single one of your band members? Absolutely. Let's go. Which band is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Andrew. This is Naomi, Eric, Otto, Steve and Lee, Eric, Mikey J. This is Elizabeth, Adriana, and Crystal. You get a gold star. Very good. Right. Yes. Now, how did you form this group and find all these people? How did I form it? A little bit of luck, mm -hmm. uh, but actually just wanted to put something together like a fantasy football team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're doing everything from uh, Justin Timberlake to Michael Jackson, uh, covering what DJs cover, but only with live instruments. And you've performed internationally as well. Yes. And where have you performed? Oh, everywhere. Pick a country. Now, I used to work on cruise ships for a while, and then I toured with the uh, Tommy Dorsey Orchestra for 10 years. Mm -hmm. and, and you also have CDs out. There's one we just released with my other band, the big sister of this band, Pop Evolution. That's the 20-piece band. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Pop Evolution Live. Does everybody always show up? Pretty much. When you say there's food, they always show up. <laughs> food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, you also worked with Gladys Knight. Tell us about that collaboration. A lot of, lot of one-nighters, different isolated dates with Gladys, Tony Braxton. I uh, worked a year with Donnie and Marie, mm -hmm. worked with Cirque du Soleil, but yeah, yeah, and recorded with Gladys. And you also taught over at UNLV. I did for a couple years. Mm -hmm. I actually did my uh, graduate degree there, master's in composition, uh, in 2004. And are you writing music these days as well? Pretty much. I everything you hear, what we do, I arrange. And uh, actually, Naomi and I have collaborated mm -hmm. on a couple of different songs that are on our, it's on our last CD. Now again, when and where can people see you perform this weekend? You can see us at the Palms Lounge. This Saturday. Um, at 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's no cover. Doors are open at 10. So come on by. All right. And you're going to perform for us right now. What is the name of the song? It's called Bang Bang. All right. We're going to let you take All it right, away. All right. Here we go. Thanks.
Dance meets fashion in today's pet party for a luxurious charity fashion show where 100% all of the proceeds benefit a local no-kill animal shelter. Joining me now are Nancy Bowser, the creator of Dance Meets Fashion, and Kathy Young, who is the president of the NSPCA. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. And you brought a couple of uh, beneficiaries of this yes, upcoming charity. Absolutely. Who are these puppies? We brought Riley, who uh -huh. is six years old, and Aww. we brought Franklin, who is five months old. And Franklin is part monkey because he just <laughs> wants to go everywhere. Well, he was like totally revved up by the band too oh, before exactly. he, was sort of, he was trying to dance with everybody. He's like, I got this. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, Nancy, what is uh, Dance Meets Fashion? Well, Dance Meets Fashion is a way that we can bring uh, luxurious fashion and a performance dance to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just combining things when we have local uh, fashion designers or local stores, local um, charity. Uh -huh. And this year we're going to be doing it for Nevada SPCA No Kill Shelter. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, how did you come up with this idea? Um, it was just an idea. I wanted to bring something new to the community three years ago. And uh, we don't have anything like it. Yeah. So we just combined a few things and there we go. Well, I'm really excited how fashion is taking off here in Las Vegas. I mean, there are a lot of great designers here who are operating in town. A lot of them in downtown Las Vegas. Absolutely. Yeah. This year, we're actually going to be highlighting the hair, makeup, and accessory people. Neat. Uh, the people that make everything mm -hmm. look so good. Yeah. And what kind of dancing can people expect to see? We have Jennifer Romas and her ladies from Sexy oh, Show. Oh, she's, she's been on the show before. She's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're very excited. Yeah, and she's done a lot to I mean, this, she created this show from scratch, and she's just doing great work. Uh, Dance Meets Fashion, Tuesday, October 27th, from 6 to 9 p.m. It's at the Tommy Wind Theater. Where is that? That's on the Strip. It's actually uh, just north of the MGM Hotel. Okay, so it's across from the Monte Carlo? Yes, it is. Yeah, so tell us about the venue. I mean, how many people can you expect? Um, we're hoping to have around four to 500, mm -hmm. but the venue holds 1,800, so the so more the merrier. merrier. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the uh, MCs is from HGTV? Uh, yes, uh, we have Annalie Bell and J.D. Scott are oh, our neat. MCs. Oh, neat. Yes. Well, Kathy, you know a lot of people are really familiar with the NSPCA, but they may not understand. You don't just have dogs and cats. You've got hundreds of animals oh, that you're absolutely. taking care of. At any given time, there's 800 animals in the shelter. Wow. Um, yes, we have the dogs and we have the cats, but we have rabbits, we have guinea pigs, we have hamsters. Right now we have a rooster, we have a few potbelly pigs. <laughs> At one time we had a llama, we've had an alpaca. Wait a minute, wait, wait, go back. You had a llama? Yeah, we had a llama. Yeah, <laughs> we had a llama, we had a wallaby. I mean, so truly, if there's a need, we will do our very best to reach out, to reach out and help. And if it is an animal that we can't take care of, we will reach out to other groups that specialize in those animals and they're more than happy to help us out as well. And how as serious is the need? Are you seeing more animals than before or is it pretty steady? Because well, during the foreclosure crisis, that was oh, ama that was it was tripling. amazing. But yeah. we live in a very unique city when it comes to, to an animal shelter because we live in such a transient city right. that people come in, they think they're going to make their millions, set up their family and realize Vegas isn't that it's not that easy and right. then unfortunately the dog loses out or the cat loses out and, and they end up with us and we'll, we understand things happen but please call us up, give us some time, give us two weeks, give us three weeks, put it on the calendar and we'll help you out. And Nancy, you have pets of your own. When you, when you chose NSPCA, what was your thought behind that? Well, I actually went to a charity function and uh, Paul and Carmen Shortino were there. Yes. Met them, we become friends and they're so passionate about uh, what they do, right. not only financially, but they are very active in rescue. Yeah. So it just rubbed off. Yeah. And I understand he's going to uh, donate one of his famous canes to be yes. auctioned off. Yeah. And his voice. Yes. That's he's going to sing for us that night. That's going to be very, very cool. Thank you for putting this event together. It's going to do a lot of good. Thank you both for being on. And so uh, I've got to head across the hall to Action News Live at 3 o'clock. But first of all, details once again, the Dance Meets Fashion event is Tuesday, October 27th, 
15th at the Tommy Wynn Theater on Las Vegas Boulevard. It's across from Monte Carlo at 6 p.m. And all of the proceeds, everything from the event, will benefit the NSPCA. It's a no-kill animal shelter. For tickets, head over to the website on your screen. Okay, we've got lots coming up on Action News Live at 3 o'clock. But before I go, like right behind me, this week, Action News and House of Blues are giving you a chance to win two tickets to see Santana. Enter each day at KTNB.com, the Action News mobile site, or Facebook page and click on contest, then watch live at 11 to see if you win. Santana at House of Blues is a proud sponsor of Action News and is providing the prizes for this promotion. We'll be right back. is half the battle in the fight against cancer and that is why there was an empowering movement to save lives while telling the disease to suck it. Here now with more Lisa Van Beek, the founder of Suck It Cancer and a warrior against breast cancer. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having Can me. Can you tell us when were you diagnosed with breast cancer? November 14th of 2014 so just a year ago Wow! and, and tell us about the journey from where you started in November of 2014 and where you are today because you've gone through so much it's been a big year um, on uh, the 14th we were diagnosed and uh, at that point it wasn't something that my doctors even expected to be cancer they thought it was just a little tumor that we just probably needed to get rid of Fast forward two months, it is stage two invasive and I needed a bilateral mastectomy. Wow. So I had that on December 30th and um, they found in that surgery that it had in fact already spread to my lymph nodes. Mm. So that elevated my stage to stage 2B and um, at that point we determined I had to have chemotherapy mm. and unfortunately when they did the surgery they also weren't able to get all of the cancer out which unfortunately happens kind of often. And uh, that meant I also had to have radiation. So I uh, got healed from the, the surgery and February 4th, I began chemotherapy and did that for about five months and then healed up from that for about a month and wow. then moved into radiation every day for seven weeks. And um, about a week, I'm sorry, about a month after that, I, I took my first test and uh, got the good news that we seem to have gotten it. Oh, so fantastic. I think I'm in remission. So happy fantastic. for you. And Thank you. this entire journey, I mean, cancer has struck my family in various ways. And I know breast cancer is so, so vigorous when it comes into someone's life. And for you, you've been able to channel that energy, that all of that energy that goes into the, the fight against breast cancer into something that's maybe a little bit positive. What is that? What is suck it cancer? Well, I, having been diagnosed right around the holidays, it was just something that I needed to do. I, I already work in the fashion industry, so uh, I made some t-shirts for my family that just said, suck it, cancer. It was a Christmas gift and just really something to make people smile and it's to keep simple my family. And it's, it's what everyone feels. Like, it's oh. what you feel, you just wanna say it. Yeah. And um, so I sent them back for everybody at Christmas. And, uh, and then I had my, my surgery, like I said, just right around the holidays. And people started posting pictures to Facebook, you know, rallying. Yeah. And, um, and then other people started asking where they could buy them. Uh. And so in the midst of a lot of painkiller haze after my surgery, sure. I decided it was a great opportunity to turn into a fundraiser. Um, one of the things that was really overwhelming to me through the process was how many doctor appointments you have, all of the co-pays, and the, just the expense of cancer. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and I, I came from humble beginnings, and it wasn't that long ago that I couldn't pay all my bills in the same day or the same sure. month. So I really just thought I wanted to do something, and these t-shirts were the perfect thing. So, you know, we, we filed the trademark, launched the website, and in the first week we got something like 30 orders, and we're donating a portion of every sale to nonprofit organizations, helping people who are fighting cancer, and in very grassroots ways, um, helping them pay for groceries or pay for gas for their cars to get to treatments and um, you know copays, things like that. So here you are in town, and la was it last night that you helped turn the high roller pink yeah. at midnight? It at was midnight? awesome. We that got a moment? picture right there. How did that feel in that moment? At I. Midnight? You know, I was trying to be cool about it, but I was a little overwhelmed. Yeah. It was, it was, I mean, it was so big, so grand, and it was just such an awesome display of power. And just the entire city of Vegas could see it. So I don't know who saw it at midnight, but I think a lot of people, and it was great. Oh, yeah, and you're, you're here for PBR as well. <laughs> yes, yes. 
PBR's World Finals is going on this week, and tonight is um, it's their Pink Night. Mm -hmm. So PBR's um, taken on a, a great initiative with their Pink Promise, yes. and they're working with the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. And uh, tonight is the night that everybody's going to be dressed in pink. Right. They've got a lot of fundraising opportunities and great things, so the fans can really get involved tonight. Yeah. Everyone's rallying. And that's Everyone's why we're wearing pink now. right now, yeah. too. Yeah. Thank you so Keep much. Thank you. So thank, you. Right. Thank, you so, thank you so much. And we'll be right back. Suck it.